Hello, and welcome to another Climate Tech Podcast, conversations with the people trying to save us from ourselves. In this episode, I caught up with my friend Yasha Tarani, co-founder of Climate Choice. I reached Yasha in Berlin to talk about the importance of targeting scope three emissions, that is carbon that's produced from a company's supply chain, to hear about the state of play for large companies that want to go to net zero, and why he thinks people pushing for this kind of change within companies are heroes. I'm Ryan Grant Little. Thanks for joining. Yasha, it's great to see you again. Welcome to the podcast. Great to see you, Ryan. Super happy to be here. So I've known you for, I don't know, what is it, seven years or something like that. And we yeah. we were uh, co-conspirators on the Entrepreneur's Pledge, which was about uh, yeah, fellow founders, mostly in the Berlin area, committing to uh, putting some of the m money we make from exits to work into impact investing. And back then, you were a, a software as a service guy. Your, your first, or at, at least when I met you, you were working on a reservations platform. But these days, you're a software guy with a particular affinity and 100% devotion to the space of climate. So can you take us back a little bit? Tell us about how you got started and uh, and then bring us up to speed about climate choice. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for inviting me, having me on the podcast. Uh, really excited to be here. As you mentioned, I mean, like when we met like seven, eight years ago, uh, exactly, I was working on on, on, on Resmio, which was a software as a service uh, company for restaurants. And um, I basically, you know, like have been entrepreneur my whole life or my whole professional life. Um, and, um, you know, like back then, I first um, yeah learned about the topic actually of climate change. I think like through people like you and 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 other ones that I had discussions uh, about, and I, I I realized okay wow this is really a really big problem, and uh, yeah and back then I thought okay you know like uh, it's great to help restaurants getting in more customers, but like what impact do we as a have as a company right as a as a as a startup company? I mean we spend money you know like we make business decisions every day, and um, yeah, I, I basically uh, thought back then. Okay, uh, what what can we do as a as a general company that is not you know like in the in the climate tech or in the in the in the impact field? And you know, one of the first things that that came back then to my mind was okay, why don't we just start spend spending our money more wisely? You know, so kind of like finding you know more more sustainable coffee providers, like as easy as that, right? Or like, or as not easy as that, I guess. Um, and then like, how can we save energy? Can we switch to renewable energy providers? Do we find green hoster? So, so very, you know, like pragmatic and, and, and uh, simple things. Um, however, um, that was a, that was a kind of like a, a tough experience because you realized, okay, wow. You know, like it, you cannot, uh, find these solutions and you cannot kind of like compare these solutions and and understand on what their impact is actually on climate. And that really kind of like sparked the first idea or the first, you know, like the the, the understanding of the problem and 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 thinking about, okay, wow, if businesses spend so much money and and on on, on so many things, even more like consumers, how do they, uh, you know, make make climate choices basically, and and uh, on a, on a daily base, and and that kind of like got me started on on thinking about the problem. Okay, so initially you were looking at this. I, I think this was at, at a time when you had taken a break. You were kind of traveling around and and uh, trying to think of some some cool ideas, and you were looking at this from a consumer perspective first of all, how people can make better choices, and then you kind of leveled that up to thinking, okay, at me as a as a consumer, I'm spending far less than the average company. And if I'm dealing with these problems, companies are also around sourcing. Dealing yeah, with actually, no, ex yeah, yeah. So actually, yes, kind of like, but it was actually while we're like, while I was at, as, at my previous company, um, when, when this came actually apparent in the context of business decisions. However, you're exactly right, right? As consumers, we know, you know, like e-commerce shops that, that, solely try to you know like select brands that are more you know sustainable in their production so exactly i was looking for a solution like that right i was looking for a place where we can you know find these sustainable products but in a business context yeah um but yeah you you're also right um you know like after i i, I left the company in 2016 um and and started uh you know to work on a little bit on consulting and advisory and and 
things like that and got more into the topic of climate. I worked with a couple, um, you know, companies at, at, at Climate Kick. Um, that, That's that, the uh, Climate Kick is sort of the EU part of, of money working on climate change solutions. It, yeah, exactly. And and uh, started to work with startups there and I like realized, okay, well, there's so many, you know, like great ideas and so many alternatives and, and these need to be, you know, like known by businesses. And, you know, like things kind of like felt like, you know, like like pieces of puzzle, you know, came together, like the experience that I uh, that I made, you know, a couple of years ago at my previous company. And then the the seeing these, you know, business solutions and, and you know, innovations and then also, you know, like thinking more about, you know, how can we empower businesses to to make those climate conscious choices? Yeah. So, OK, you started seeing through groups like Climate Kick different ideas and they started gelling with some of the thoughts you had previously as, a, as someone exactly. who ran a business. And then that gave you kind of the customer perspective of, you know, like you remember needing this this exactly. type of service. And and so then this is how Climate Choice came about. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So who is it solving the problem for? It sounds like it's solving a sourcing problem, like a, a green sourcing problem. Who is it for? Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. I mean, like, actually, we started exactly, you know, like with the with the thought of, you know, we're building kind of like the Amazon, like the B2B Amazon uh, for, for only green, you know, suppliers and green products. To kind of like source them, right? That that's exactly how we how we imagined it in the beginning, uh, but like what we're actually ended up doing, or what we're doing now, is actually really enabling companies to compare their supplier base uh, based on climate management practices and and data. What we learned is actually, you know, the 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 issue is that a lot of large, you know, global enterprises they cannot just, you know, or, or they also don't want to change their existing supplier base necessarily. But they need to implement change in the supplier base and they need to understand on where do the suppliers stand at, you know, this point of time and how can they help them, uh, you know, to 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 provide them, first of all, better data, but also, you know, how can they help them to 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 change? Because, yeah, supplier relations are mostly, you know, grown over years. You know, maybe there's only one supplier or two suppliers that can provide, you know, specific products and services. So, yeah, the comp the, the problem we 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 started to understand it's much more complex um, as 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 uh, you know we, we we thought initially, and that's what we're basically doing now. So the problem that we're solving is is basically we work with procurement uh, teams and sustainability teams in uh, large organizations to help them to understand their sub current supplier base um, by by gathering data and also then feedbacking information to the suppliers so they can learn from from the process and understand what they can do to become you know better in their climate management and comply more with you know upcoming regulations but also the data needs of their their corporate partners okay so it sounds a lot less transactional than a marketplace yeah. like amazon as well and crucially exactly. it doesn't have just products but you're also talking about services i mean if i think about large companies and and greening their procurement I'm not just thinking about uh, computer equipment or photocopier paper, but also their electricity providers and their gas providers and, and all these kinds of things. Exactly. I mean, like it's 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 massive. You know, it's like they're you know, like let's think about you know, like steel providers or like um, you know, like massive you know, uh, in, in industries or massive you know, like products uh, um, that 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 companies buy and that really drive you know their their emissions. So. It's really about understanding, yes, ideally on the product level, like how do products compare? However, at this point of time, you know, that data is barely available. So it's a lot about understanding on a company level, first of all, do they manage kind of like the topic of climate? Is that a company that that has a plan on how to decarbonize, right? Because ultimately that will also affect the products. But this is a major issue in the whole, you know, like uh, scope three you know, topic decarbonization topic that product level data is, is 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 not yet available. It's very expensive to 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 calculate, and it's only kind of like yeah, starting to 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 become more available. Can you quickly unpack scope one, scope two, and scope three, and just tell us sure. what those terms are? Sure. Uh, so um, in carbon accounting, you differentiate between scope 
one, two, and three, like you say. Uh, scope one is uh, basically the mission, the emissions that come from your own company's operations. Scope two are the uh, emissions that derive from energy. And then scope three is the upstream and downstream uh, emissions um, from the value chain. So basically, you not only look at, you know, like your direct emissions, but scope three is really about the indirect emissions, because, you know, like a lot of emissions are actually being emitted <laughs> in the beginning, <laughs> you know, like uh, in, in the production phase, right? And then companies buy, buy you know, like these, these products, because we're now in this globalization, globalized world, you know, like every you know, everyone does does its part. We're very, very efficient in terms of, you know, have having specialized companies only doing a small part of the value chain and do that very efficient and, and for, for a good price most most of the times, right? And then, but there's like the, the there are, there that's where the emissions are stuck, right? Um, so that is a big, uh, big, big issue. And then also, of course, usage of products, right? So the, 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 the downstream part of the value chain. So what happens after the product leaves your door, um, so what are actually the users of the products um, are, are um, emitting through downstream kind of like life cycle part. <laughs> so uh, that's that's uh, in, a, in a nutshell what what uh, scope one, two and three emissions are. About. Emissions, emissions going to emit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> OK, so scope three is basically from the supply chain and that's where you're you're focusing. Why do big companies care if their supply chains are green or not? In the end, it's about, um, you know, a lot of stakeholders demanding these informations, right? Um, so they want to understand on how uh, companies are yeah, managing their climate uh, emissions. Let's let's maybe uh, start with, you know, like who are the stakeholders, right? So regulators, I mean, in, in Europe, there's the CSRD on the horizon, uh, which 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 has a big part about like... What's a, that? A, Tell us about what that the is. The CSRD is um, the... the um, the corporates, um, um, the the new directive to report on 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 social but also environmental topics. Uh, it's part of a bigger um, set of of or like it's it's the main part of bigger you know regulatory changes um, for for achieving um, our our um, one point five degree goal in the in the European Union. And if I remember correctly, that that affects about fifty thousand companies across Europe that will now be required to re report. It's uh, exactly on, on on emissions and other environmental exactly. and, and social standards right? exactly and and the uh, and and this is doesn't not only affect these 50,000 companies in the EU but there's also a study um that uh, says it also it will affect 10,000 other companies outside of the EU because they have subsidies you know that are public companies right. uh, or like maybe traded on a on a on a european you know uh, market um or they also, then the companies that are in the value chain, they're affected. So basically, it's really affecting everyone, <laughs> I, I would say, um, that that is doing businesses, uh, business with the EU or in the EU. Um, so that is a is a is a is a very big, uh, big, uh, big topic currently. And um, yes, Ryan. And is the directive to... around transparency? Is it the directive exactly. just around reporting? And then we'll see how the kind of how the chips fall. And, and then there will be some competitive pressures from stakeholders to do better once this is kind of all all out on the table. Or is this is this also about behavior change for the, for the companies? Do they ha are there are there requirements for emissions as well that come with this? Exactly. Or is that a later step? No, exactly. So if, if um, so, currently there's a is a, the the CSRD is in in a like there was just a big update uh, last week. They actually uh, also um, currently have a public uh, public uh, feedback uh, period. I think in the next four weeks on the on the current um, kind of like requirements. And um, yes, climate is a big part. So it's not only about emission uh, disclosures. So scope one, two, and three emissions. It's also about transition plans, right? It's also about understanding on how companies plan, you know, to 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 move to a low carbon economy, basically, right? And and reduce their emissions. And then there's, and this is not only relevant for companies, right? It's also the whole financial sector. There's the EU taxonomy that uh, wants to understand uh, actually business activities, right? Uh, and 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 in connection to climate change mitigation and adaptation. Taxonomy, so a is a, taxonomy is a fancy word for setting the terms for something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, um, so yeah, so there's a lot of lot of regulatory change happening in the U.S. The SEC has published a proposal 
that is in discussion. Then there's on a more global level, the ISSB, the International Standard Setting Board, uh, which is part of the IFRS, that is working on, you know, like also, um, you know, aligning, you know, global standards with the CSRD standards and so on. So there's a lot of stuff happening in the regulatory landscape all over the world. And then there's also uh, the financial industry that, of course, then needs to report as well, right? They want to, and 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 this is kind of like also, um, you know, scope three emissions for an investor. The scope three emissions are actually, you know, um, also their their investments, right? Yeah. So they will need to report on that, and they will need to inform, you know, like their investors. Um, and investors are more and more, you know, thinking about this, right? Like how, what, what is my money invested? you know, in a, in a place that, that destroys the earth or like that, that somehow contributes to, to, you know, our, our climate targets. So yeah, there's, and, yeah. And, and hopefully, hopefully there are more and more investors uh, seeing the light on that though. I'm, I'm not always sure, but so some of the companies that you're working with, you're generally working with large corporates. Yeah. That's kind of your, your target. And we see a lot of these companies coming up with or you know have kind of crossed the threshold of setting net zero goals for 2040 or or this type of thing and then now a lot of them are in the space of trying to find ways to implement that right what the yeah. when they you know it was hard enough for them to get these yeah. commitments through the board and then everybody kind of took a break and then the pandemic happened all these things and now i mean what i'm seeing is a lot of these companies struggling right now to find ways to actually implement that or or kind yes. of look at what that actually means so is that are you playing a role in that are you enabling that exactly i mean like we always uh, differentiate we're not doing carbon accounting that's typically done by consultancies. That's typically done by, you know, like there's a lot of, you know, carbon accounting companies that are, are doing software around this to calculate the emissions, typically using average emission factors, right? So you, you for example, use your spent data as a company, and then you look at the emission factor. And I always say this is like calculating with an average price. So, yeah. you know, like every thing looks the same yeah so that's better, exactly, better than nothing but not totally accurate. exactly it's a, it helps you to understand like the hot spots where 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 should i yeah. focus on uh but then you need supplier specific information and that's where we come in so then we help you know to understand where the suppliers currently stand we always say like we understand we help them understand their climate maturity and you know map the supplier structure and then deriving you know insights and roadmaps to support you know suppliers or work with suppliers on on decarbonization and also track you know progress so we are actually really focused on 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 this part on implementing change in your in your on your supplier base and and getting the necessary data yeah and what kind of resistance do you hear so what are the main main objections for not doing this from big companies the issue is what I most often hear, uh, to be honest, is, uh, is I just had the call this morning, like, I would love to do this. Um, but, you know, like in our industry, it's hard currently. We don't have, you know, budgets, you know, are tight. You know, I'm trying to get this done and uh, and and this. And so sustainability reporting was a marketing, uh, marketing exercise, I think, in the past, right? And now, you know, like especially climate data is becoming financial relevant information. There is a whole shift for like, you know, companies to prepare for that. And we're just in the process of of that uh, that that's happening. So, the the resources and budgets are not necessarily there yet, but we can see you know like a big shift happening. And lots of corporates are are telling us you know like we have sustainability managers in every department, right? Before there was a team you know like in a massive company maybe with ten sustainability managers maybe concerned with writing a report, but now it's really about okay you know like we need this everywhere. And, and so and it used is, to be. It used to be we we don't use plastic straws in the cafeteria anymore, and some nice pictures to go with it. And now investors are looking at this and looking at the future risk and and discounting exactly. that today for things that won't be valuable anymore because of climate. Change. So so called stranded yeah. assets and and this type of thing. So it's actually the finance department looking at this now, and not just not only consumers looking for feel good stories. Exactly. And that's that's uh, that's a big change. And that also makes it uh, also complicated. Right. There's lots of stakeholders involved. So typically, if we you know, speak with companies there. So first of all, sustainability department or climate experts are, are involved, of course, that's that's the first, um, you know, typically the first uh, conversations that we have. And then 
it's about getting the procurement department in, right? So there's the CPO then typically, you know, coming in and, and asking like very pragmatical process questions, right? So there's, you know, like this, this other stakeholder. And then sometimes then there's then, you know, like finance or, or investor relations coming in as well. So it's, it's really... A, you know that this is really another another thing. I mean, like you, it's for me, it's very new, right? But before I worked with restaurants, it's mostly about you know, like uh, you're getting, talking getting to the owner. <laughs> exactly, I'm talking to the owner, making making uh, you know, convincing him to 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 work with software. Um, now it's about you know, like so many more you know, complex um, you know, interests and um, yeah, kind of like relations that were that that are of course with any innovation topic, right? Like uh, I, this is not exclusive to climate, but it's like with with any innovation topic, right? Like corporate are not necessarily often you know uh, prepared for change and rather work on exploiting uh, you know existing business models rather than you know um are are, are set up for constant change so that's i think like a a, a general challenge i think no kidding yeah. so okay so if i if i'm the ceo of acmeco a multi billion dollar widget manufacturer and you're telling me that i should become a customer of of climate choice my, I'm going to push back and say, we don't have demand from this from our stakeholders. I don't have budget for this. This is a distraction away from our core business. Give me the case for why I need to do this now. Why, what will happen if I don't do this? So if so basically, so most of the companies actually are coming to us when they set, you know, climate targets. They understood their hotspots, you know, like they understand, okay, we have a problem there and we need to work with our suppliers and we need to get, you know, like this information. So Typically, that's where we where we start the conversations, and um, the the um, you know suppliers basically then start working with us because their their customers also then demand the information, right? So they need to understand, or they need to I want to also understand and 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 uh, what they can do to improve. So I think that's a that's a good um, you know um, mechanism to drive change. However, you know, like in the in the case of 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 uh, what what uh, what you are describing, right? If there's uh, uh, someone that is not convinced yet, I think it's basically about will you be in business in ten years or not? I mean, like the whole world, it's not about you know like measuring your emissions and you know like reporting these. It's about change, right? It's about change of business models. It's about a transition, like the finance world always be transition to a low carbon economy. So think about: Do you want to be in business? in 10 years or not and do you want to see like you know like i would make the argument do you want to see how your competitors are doing right and we can provide you some benchmarks and in, in, insights you know like in, in 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 comparison right and this information then of course um you know is interesting to to understand and and motivate and send incentives to 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 you know think a little bit more about about the topic it's interesting because large corporates they they generally don't want to be the first unless there's really good marketing reasons behind it but they definitely don't want to be the last Right. Yes. So <laughs> if you start riding this this wave and if they've all started setting and it's great that you've got all this inbound demand basically for this and people have already drunk the Kool-Aid on that they need to do this. And then it's more about trying to figure out how to do this. And another conversation I had with the climate tech investor, Marina Sanchez Montañez, she talked about how we tend to overemphasize carbon when there are so many types of pollution that we sh should be concerned about. Are you just looking at carbon? Are you looking at waste plastic or other other aspects or does it all come back to a carbon number? I mean, we basically um, created a set of uh, data points and inf information gathering you know, points uh, so that uh, you understand basically the environmental management, like do they have waste management, water management, etc. So we look a lot on, we understand climate as a whole, <laughs> let's put it that way. However, I understand also the question that a lot of people say, okay, this is like always about carbon, sustainability, so much more. Um, so fully, of course, into that. But it's very, you know, like the, the thing is on why we're doing it the way we're doing it and why we're so focused on, on the topic of climate and environment is because, you know, this is like the same for any industry um, and any company. Whereas sustainability, like you typically start with a materiality analysis, you know, like what's interesting to your stakeholders and, and what's, what's you know, relevant for your business. And then you pick the topics that are relevant and that might be something totally different, you know, like in, like in, in one industry versus the other. 
So it's very hard to compare this and also, you know, create a set of, you know, data points. And if you look at the, you know, like reporting frameworks, I mean, GRI, like Global Reporting Initiative, uh, I think they have around 700 indicators that you could report on. Um, and 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 that's why we look on climate. And then um, also and climate. Oh, sorry, at carbon, sorry. And then carbon, you know, like also is a good measurement because it's basically an, an improved currency, right? There's, you can, uh, all the other greenhouse gases are typically then, you know, translated to carbon. Um, and also you can, most of the topics are basically translated into carbon. There's a global accepted, you know, accounting system, which is the greenhouse gas protocol. Um, and and it's it's much more, you know, standardized and accepted. And then on the product level, there's also like lots more happening on, on what are the standards that accept it. So it's, I think like the world is, 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 uh, has accepted this kind of like accounting standard. And that's why, why um, it's, it's also something that we really, really think um, can, can drive change. And, um, but yeah, we're looking at, at other environmental topics as well, because it's I, I guess it's crucial that, that we have kind of a framework for pricing carbon versus, exactly. you know, yeah. pricing waste plastic or, or these types of things or bio biodiversity. I mean, we can look at things like that, that are so exactly. crucial yeah. to climate change, but are so hard to capture in, yeah. in any kind of meaningful way when investors or other types of stakeholders yeah, are involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what are you optimistic about? What do you, when you have these conversations, I mean, it's, it, I'm already happy to hear that you have companies coming to you and, and hopefully it's because they're sincere about change and, and not just because of reporting requirements. But what, what, uh, what are you excited about when you, you know, when you have these conversations with these big companies? Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, like I'm basically in a bubble, so I have to, I have to also, also take that into account. Uh, but so definitely biased uh, around that. But like in general, I'm, I'm, I just see, you know, like um, climate is mainstream. It's not about when, when we first talked about it, right? I, I don't know which year it was. Like it was not that mainstream yet, right? Now everybody's talking about it. It's on news every day. I mean, look at New York at the moment, New York City at the moment, right? Um, I mean, I was traveling through climate change as well, like when I did a sabbatical, right, through bushfires, you know, like like more than 50 degrees Celsius at 5 a.m. in the morning in, in India and in Delhi. It's I mean, it's crazy, right? So it's it's not anymore, you know, something that is a niche topic, right? Um, so I'm optimistic um, about that, that this has happened. I'm optimistic about that, you know, like more and more investors are understanding that is a financial risk, right? If, if companies don't manage that, not, not only from, you know, like this, this uh, you know, pump or like production facilities being affected by a flood, but also because of, you know, business models not working long term, long term anymore. So, so this makes me optimistic, I guess, and and also what makes me optimistic is the regulatory environment that is changing. Although, of course, you know, like we should have much more lobbying. You know, like there was like this one podcast I listened listened to that corporates should actually use their lobbying structures to lobby for climate regulations instead of trying to protect their existing business models. But yeah, the regulatory environment is changing. We have targets. Uh, um, climate is mainstream. It makes me optimistic, and, and and I think like a lot of you know what makes me especially optimistic is kind of like our like uh, our generation, I guess, because you know at that time I see more and more people you know that we speak to you know like our our generation um, that now becomes you know like gets into management departments and you know gets more decision-making power and really cares about that, right? So we can see a lot of people are like taking this serious, want to drive it in, in their organizations. And that makes me really, really optimistic. Yeah. So well. you're a millennial. I'm an elder millennial, just uh, just after Generation X. And yeah, I, we, what we're also seeing right now is the largest transfer of private wealth in history from baby boomers to millennials. And, um, and that's having some impacts already on how assets are being invested, right? And so hopefully we'll see some more change happen there. And for me, I, I'm always, you know, I'm always looking towards the pension funds. And I think like, you know, pe pension fund managers could be the heroes of the story in a yeah. lot of ways. And that could make for the most boring comic book series potentially ever, but... <laughs> But they could be the the superheroes in in climate because you know all all of finance kind of looks to them as the north star as to to what the trends are. So if we start to see some of that, but yeah, great exactly. to see that this is already happening quite a bit at at the corporate level, and that I'm glad to hear that customers are coming to you. 
<laughs> exactly. No, and then, like, I mean, like, just to add on the, the, the what you just said, right? Like, investors should look at this as a, like the business, biggest business opportunity that is kind of like yeah. in front of us, right? Like, where can you, you know, like, have more more business opportunity if not in climate uh, or like in, in in you know low carbon products, services, etc. That drive down uh, emission reduction. And I mean, like, we're seeing this. Uh, I mean, you and me were more more, uh, I think, in the startup world, right? Like, I cannot count how many climate funds like venture capital funds were started in the last two years. I yeah. cannot count. I Especially in your like, city of Berlin. There's a lot happening uh, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But also in the US, right? So mm -hmm. like, yeah, anyways, um, no, definitely. That that makes me optimistic. Yeah, so who is your personal hero? Yeah. I mean, you sent me that question right before I have to, I have to, I have to uh, say that I, I kind of like, okay, I have to think a little bit about it. I think <laughs> it's the hardest of these questions. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, I mean, like my, my hero and like I, what I what I came up to is I think like anyone in any organization that is that is taking risks to drive change. I think like you know you don't need to be an Elon Musk you know like to to actually do do stuff right. Hopefully not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, no, but like I, I'm I'm just uh, yeah. So so you know what I mean. So the the actually your impact can be even larger if you change the organization that you're 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 working in right. Like we had the. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Foley from Project Drawdown speaking at our annual conference, and he said every job is a climate job, right? And I think like that's what we should think about, like how can we drive change where we are in our roles, because it's about incremental, you know, step by step, bringing that uh, into into organizations. And and I think like you know the people um, that are really my heroes are is anyone that is driving this forward in in organizations. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that I'm that I'm, I have the opportunity to work with so many um, you know people and speak to so many people that are really you know, serious about this and, and care about it. That's a very diplomatic answer that will go over well also in some of your marketing materials to the change makers internal to these Ooh. large corporations. So <laughs> I'm glad you're testing out some of your messaging here on the podcast. Uh, it's multi-purpose podcast. Okay. Yasha, so great to see you. So great to talk to you. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks a lot, Ryan, for having me. It was great. It was, it was great fun. And uh, yeah, um, hopefully we see us in person soon again. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for listening to another Climate Tech Podcast. Please take five seconds to send this episode link to a colleague or friend who you think might be interested. Reach out to me anytime at hello at climatetechpod.com. As you can probably tell, this episode was produced, edited, directed, stage managed, boom operated, and everything else by me. Subscribe to hear many more conversations still to come with the world's real climate tech heroes.